So today we're going to be looking at making layered jelly prints. The first thing you're going to want to do is scoop out a little bit of your printing ink, spread it inside of your ink palette a little bit. You don't need to do it a whole lot, but just enough to get the brayer going on it. Pick up your brayer and roll it one direction and then roll it the other direction. Now you'll notice it needs to cover the whole brayer. So you want to roll, pick it up, roll, pick it up, roll, pick it up. Then gently roll the ink onto your jelly plate. You'll notice it'll make a little sticky sound. It'll be kind of sticky. That's exactly what you want. Then you can do things like you can draw in textures with some of our scrapers. You can use a texture plate like this one and you want to find the bumpiest side to put down. Carefully and firmly push straight down. You don't want it to wiggle. You can see it leaves a nice pattern behind. And then you can also use things like ribbons or strips of paper, confetti, uh, fake flowers and leaves to layer on top. And where these spaces are, it will stay blank on your plate when you print. You wanna take your square and line it up on the edge, drop it down, gently hold it firmly in the middle and work your way out to the edges. You can also use a clean brayer for this to gently roll it across. This will keep it nice and flat. And then you wanna peel up from a corner to reveal your pattern. And you can see all of those patterns transferred on there. Clean everything off of your plate, get it out of the way. Remember, some of those will have ink on them and still be wet. Grab a micro towel, wash the ink off of your plate all around the edges. If it's a little too wet, you might wanna get a paper towel and dry it off. Then you're ready for your next two colors. So we're going to layer these in order. So we're going to use yellow, same thing. Put your patterns on there, pick it up, and then we're gonna do it with blue. And you can push down firmly and pull it up. Now remember, if you use a stencil, the back side's going to be wet. Keep that out of the way. It'll also leave a leftover print. So if you have an extra sheet of paper, you or your next friend wants that pattern on their paper, you can let them put it on there. You have to press a little bit more firmly for this one because when you pick it up, it's going to be a lot lighter. There's a lot less ink on there, but it will still leave a pattern if the next person in your group wants to use it. Once again, you'll want to clean this all off, uh, and when we're all finished, they'll go in a bucket over in the sink. Now, I'm also going to show you with this pink one. Put this back on here. Make sure you get all of those spaces. You can see if it's a little wet that it likes to pick it up or skip those spaces. And I'm going to, for instance, use the wood to cover the whole thing like this, right? Push it down, pull it up. You can see that nice wood pattern on there. Remember, you have to clean off any of the plastic pieces that you use with that ink. You don't want it to accidentally get on your friends. You can take the next one and you can go backwards. So we did blue first. Now we're doing pink on top of the blue. That'll give us some pink areas, some blue areas, and a little bit of purple where those areas overlap. So going backwards gets you another color set. If you start and go forwards, pink, yellow, blue, you get some nice colors. But if you go backwards and you do blue and then you do pink, now I'm going to do yellow. So I'm going out of order a little bit. And I think this time for the yellow, I'm going to look at doing a little bit of scraping. Now, if you take too long, um, sometimes it'll dry on there and it won't work for the scraper. That means you'll have to pick something else to do instead. So I've done that yellow, I have the scraper, it has a nice pattern on there. Now I think I'm gonna add a little extra pattern down here. I'm gonna squish this one in, and you can see where the ink is transferring to it in between. There you go. And I think I'm gonna put some more ribbons on here and I can lay those down in all sorts of patterns. I could do straight lines and stripes. I can make them wiggly squiggly. It's totally up to you how you want these to be on here. Just remember wherever you put something, solid, it's going to block the color so you won't have any color printed in that area. And then I'm going to take my same piece of paper, flip it over, and I'm going to push down really firm. Again, if you have a clean brayer, you can roll it over the top, but never use a brayer that already has ink on it. Just use your hands. And then when I pull this off, you can see where those ribbons were, or they left that gap to show you all of the pink instead of combining the yellow with the blue to make green and the pink to make orange. 
make sure that these move over to the drying rack so we can use them during the next class. Now, after your backgrounds have dried from your jelly print, we want to look at making your little block print out of our styrofoam sheets. So the first thing you're going to do is take a Sharpie and gently draw in your main idea that we're going to print on there. And these are going to come out a little bit like a silhouette. We're going to use black ink on these ones when we print them. Um, and we're going to cut them out from the rest of the styrofoam. We don't want all of that sky to just show up as a rectangle. We want it to look a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna draw my tree, my bridge. I took a trip to the Arboretum, so that's why I used flowers and wood in my backgrounds when I was doing the ink printing on the jelly plates. I wanna add in lots of little textures in here on my pine trees and my trees and my bushes. And when we were at the Arboretum, there was a big building that we had to walk through had lots of different types of rooftops, lots of doors, but there were still always trees everywhere at the Arboretum, weren't there? And then in addition to the trees and the buildings and the bridges, there were also a lot of flowers. So I want to make sure that I'm adding in the flowers and the wildlife. So I'm going to draw those down here. And of course, now that we're done with our marker, we're going to switch to a pencil to push into the foam. We want to make it so that it dents the foam for our printing. Now, when I, uh oh, wait a minute. See how I'm poking a hole in here? It's because my pencil is too sharp. So take a scratch sheet of paper and scribble straight up and down with that pencil. You don't want it sharp. You actually want it to be dull. If you can't find a dull pencil to start with, then making yours dull. Uh, by coloring straight up and down is the best thing to do. It also makes the edges a little sharp, so then you'll want to kind of scribble in a circle to round off those edges. Now my pencil's not quite so sharp, and I can use it over here on my styrofoam. So I want to go through and trace those black edges, and I want to push gently but firmly so that I can feel the styrofoam denting in. It makes a little indentation in there where if you feel it with your finger, you'll feel a little groove. You want to try and stay on top of those lines as much as possible when you're working on this. It's usually easier to pull the pencil towards you than it is to push it away from you when you're working on this. So if you need to turn your foam plate to get a better angle, you are absolutely allowed to do that. You do not have to keep your foam plate straight up and down like I am in here. And if there's other little details you want to add in, in big open spaces, you can do that. Again, we don't have to worry about the background in the sky because we're going to be cutting that off in just a few minutes. All right, now that I'm finished, if I tip it sideways like this, you can kind of see where those indentations are. And if you put your fingers across it, you can definitely feel it. You're gonna to wanna to pick up your scissors and we're going to cut out the sky or the background part that we're not printing. When you do this, you wanna leave a tiny gap right along the edge of that outer black line. You don't wanna cut on the black line, you wanna cut just outside of it. And you have to be careful not to overbend your styrofoam when you're working with this. So keep moving it around back and forth as you need to to get around those edges. We don't wanna cut anything too short or cut anything off on accident. There's not really a way to fix that. You can also use the large deep part of your scissors or you can use the little ends to snip into smaller spaces with those scissors. Sometimes it works better to snip small than it does to cut big in those tiny spaces. Then I'm gonna go over here I don't have to get into the super small spaces. And if I try and get in between the tree and this building, I think my paper is going to rip. So I'm just going to leave that gap in there and cut around the squiggly edges of my tree where those leaves are. Being careful not to tear my foam plate. A little more over here. There we go. Now that I have this cut out, I want to ink it so that I can print it on my backgrounds. We're going to be using a very dark ink, so we're going to use black for this. 
you'll need to have your black ink and your little palette knife to scoop some of it out and put it on the tray. Again, you don't need very much. Each person will have a turn to do this. Spread it a little back and forth so we can get the brayer to go through it. Or make sure your brayer is rolling well. And remember, we're doing that bicycle pedal motion, right? We're going to pick up the brayer as we roll it. We're not going to leave it and just roll straight back and forth. See how it comes up off of the tray? That's what you're going to do. If it just goes back and forth, it won't cover the whole thing. You need to come up and off. And you also want to look for these tiny little textures. That means that it's spreading out the right way and it's covering just where you want it to. Now, put this on top of an extra sheet of paper because it'll make a little bit of a mess. You're going to roll it horizontal and you're going to roll it vertical. We don't want to cover the whole thing, those little white lines. We want to leave those in though. Those are the right way to do it. Move your paper out of the way. Bring in one of your pictures that you created earlier with the jelly plates and then make sure you have it put the right direction. Line up the edge of your foam plate with the edge of your jelly print just like this and then gently tap, 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 tap all over so you know that that's on there nice and flat. The other way you can check to make sure it's on there nice and flat is when you pick it up, it sticks. It's not going to come off. You want to make sure you peel from a corner to show off your print. So here's one of them that I did oh, and then I have my other one. So I'm going to show you how to do it on one that has a little bit heavier background. It's the same process of inking. You want to make sure you have it on a background so you're not getting it all over your table. Get a nice thick coat of ink on there but don't fill in all of those lines. You want to leave the little white lines in there. I'm going to put an extra rollover coat on this one and then I'm going to bring in my next one. I'm going to make sure it's turned the direction I want it. Line up the corners and the edges of my foam plate with my jelly print. Push, push, push. Do it nice and flat. Make sure that it's all touching. And then peel off the corner. Did my check to make sure it didn't fall off. And there is my little scene of the Arboretum on my backgrounds. These go on the drying rack and we'll frame them up next class.